Good morning guys and welcome to the PhD vlog day 9. Today is March the 9th 2015 and it is now 9 o'clock and I am just about to head out of the house and go to the Institute of Classical Studies library. Um, I am a little bit nervous about the week ahead. I have so much to do in order to hit that deadline of uh, submitting this redrafted chapter 4 on Sunday night. Um, there's there's no problem if I don't hit that deadline. It's n there's nothing, you know, nothing's going to happen. Um, but it's just important for my long-term thesis deadline to try and be very punctual about all the interim deadlines that I've set myself on the way. I have another show to look forward to this evening. Uh, you probably think that I go to the theatre all the time. I do go to the theatre a lot, um, but I feel like it's important to just clarify that the shows that I'm seeing are often kind of fringe shows. They are they are not um, West End shows. I mean, I suppose Antigone would be the the only kind of West End level show that I've seen. Which I mean, it's at the Barbican. It's not on the West End, but it is um, a high profile show. Anyway, tonight I'm seeing another Greek tragedy. It is a production of The Back Eye. This is a production which uh, I hold no hope for discussing in the conclusion of my thesis because it's definitely not an experimental version. It is done in mask, so it's going to be a more traditional version. Uh, anyway, I will look forward to vlogging from that this evening. And um, I'm going to be attending with a PhD student who is actually writing his thesis on The Back Eye. He's a theatre studies student rather than a classic student and I'm sure he will have a lot to say, so you will get a lot of expert opinions. See you then, bye. Okay, so it's now one o'clock and I am just heading down to the Senate House lunchroom. After a decent morning of work, I didn't get my favorite seat in the library today, unfortunately, but I have rewritten 900 words in deconstruction as it applies to the Worcester group. So that was the section that I didn't have the right resources for on Saturday. So I've found my notes and I have rewritten that section. I am still a bit daunted by just how much I've got to go for this chapter. Um, and I'm feeling a little bit annoyed that I don't have more time today to do what I need to do. So I have to leave at six to go to this play tonight. But hopefully I can make some good headway. I am now in the lunchroom in Senate House and we are having a very fascinating discussion about ships. It's not a battleship. What's, what's not a battleship? A frigate. So if you've ever wondered how to treat a fight, we are currently pulling information about how to treat scorpion bites and what we talked about. Wasp stings, hornets. So apparently wasps and hornets, you put the sting in salt water and if you have a scorpion, you need to put a scorpion bite, you have to put it into petrochemicals to draw out the venom. I'm not quite sure about that one, but Steven says it worked for his mom. So you today's discussions are all about dangerous animals and we're currently debating the turning circles really of crocodiles. Wait, is it difficult for them to swerve? They, it is, not it, very they don't have a good turning circle. That's what I they right? have great straight line speed. It, it, but you can't just go like that because then they're just going yeah, to like chomp like, your face yeah. off. <laughs> Modern Peugeot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if crocodiles get dizzy? The bite and roll thing, right? Oh, they do do and bite and roll. If they, I mean, this is while they're eating, so I mean, it clearly wouldn't work if they got dizzy. It is now four o'clock, and surprise, surprise, I am off to Stop Street Espresso for a coffee. Um, my work this afternoon hasn't been going as well as I would have liked it to. I haven't made as much progress as I did this morning when I rewrote that section on deconstruction. That seemed to go quite well. Um, afternoon I've kind of been bouncing back and forth between the Worcester group section and the Play SD section. I've been trying to mix it up in the name of kind of remaining productive so when I've kind of hit a brick wall I've been going back to the Play SD section just so I can keep being productive and keep, um, keep getting things done. I really really don't want to leave the library today without having a really detailed concrete plan of what the rest of my Worcester group section is going to look like. Um, I don't think I'm going to be satisfied with my work today unless I've done that. Uh, so I've got 
but once I've had my coffee, I'll have a bit under two hours to accomplish that. So I'm really hoping I can get that done. It's just so hard to kind of get my ideas in order. I've always found that a struggle. Um, my favorite bits of the process are always the kind of researching period and the, the discovery trail, being a detective and finding out all the information. Uh, and then the initial writing period sometimes can be hard, but it's quite easy to hit targets. I find when I write a first draft and I say I want to do a thousand words a day, it's quite easy to do that and to feel like you're accomplishing things. It's this kind of really clarifying the ideas and working out exactly what you want the final argument to look like that is arguably for me the most difficult. So I have just left the library at 6pm and unfortunately I haven't left with a nice neat plan of how the rest of my analysis of the Worcester Group's production is going to look. Uh, not much I can do about that, but I am a bit disappointed, unfortunately. Um, nevertheless, I am a big believer that ideas just take a certain amount of time to be formulated, and I'm sure that I've made progress this afternoon, and it will mean that it will come easier tomorrow when I do get around to doing that plan. Um, but still, I, I just wish I was getting through this a little bit quicker, and... I'm feeling a bit anxious and stressed now. I am now on my way to the back eye with back eye expert extraordinaire. David, are you excited about the production? I am really excited about the production. What are you hoping to see? Um, I'm hoping to see them not dick over all the women. <laughs> but I, I, I fear <laughs> that may be the case. See my thesis. Forthcoming. Yes, forthcoming. <laughs> many, many years time. Um, um, so. What, what, what are your pet hates in back eye productions? Okay, three, three pet hates other than dicking over women. Okay. And like, um, the three best things you can do, in your opinion. <laughs> okay, oh, a lot. So, uh, well, let's just condense this. Um, three pet hates. Number one, um, making the women pseudo animal sex kind of dancers. Um, you know, wearing kind of scantily clad leopard skins. Rusting their hips and all the coral islands. <laughs> Number two, Pentheus and Dionysus love stories, which are awful. Um, and uh, for reasons I don't really need to explain. It. I'm not anti gay, I'm actually gay. Um, and, uh, and the third terrible thing is a Theresius that is like an old bearded man that is essentially. Wandering around going, <laughs> that's that's the third one. You could do so many interesting things to try easiest. Why would you make him an old bearded man? We play back eye bingo. <laughs> we could back eye bingo, yes. However, three top three things you can do you can do so much with that earthquake, yeah, which could be really amazing. You can do um, so much with the with agave, the agave scene can like stop people in their tracks. It's like the best moment in all extant theatre. Um, that's quite a bold statement, but... Yeah. I mean um, and, uh, and then the third top thing that you can do is um, like, really make the most of choral odes, you know? Yeah, okay. But, but not in a kind of way that means let's just curve on the women, which is often the tactic of many a professional director who should know better. <laughs> that's, that, that's my uh, top three. Film this. So I just heard a great bit of uh, fascinating information from David about red wine. Would you like to share with so, um, YouTube? Uh, red wine is equivalent to one hour's workout um, because there is a chemical in red vegetables and fruit that burns calories. So if you eat red onions and like red, but if you eat red, drink red wine, well, that's basically just doing a job. And you know, I do, I do research Dionysus. So this is how I know these things. I would take that with a pinch of skepticism myself. The, we're going to see a play about yeah. not believing but Dionysus. Now we're so. at the theatre entrance. Now, what are your comments about the production? Well, um, I thought they had some really fabulous moments in it. Um, and, uh, I mean, it could have been editing and like, cutting down, um, but I appreciated they kept in the Greek jokes, which was good. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, there was some. Uh, so I really, I really thought the, the the way they did the gods at the end, like the god at the end, who was doing, doing kind of thing, was really 
original. I had never seen anything like that before, which is quite unusual. Um, and I thought it was interesting. It was a really interesting Jerry approach. Jerry and um, yeah, I, um, I, I would go see something from Masters again. Hi guys, so I just got in from my trip to see the Bacchae at Theatro Technus. Um, it's now about 10.30 at night and I am ready for bed. Going to have a quick shower and then hit the sack. Um, I, I'm not sure what to say about the production really. So the production was done completely in masks and that was really interesting and some of the characters had the full helmet mask which they would have worn in the ancient theatre most likely so instead of it just being a face mask it actually goes over the skull um, and o over the kind of cranium section of the head and is worn like a helmet so it was really interesting I've never seen a production w done properly with those type of masks uh, it had an almost full chorus, it had live music, um, Marcel, shush. So it was done in, um, with a, with, in full mask with an almost full size chorus, uh, lots of kind of singing underlaying the action. It was also the complete back eye, so they did the entire script. I literally do not think that they cut a single line. They used the, the Philip Vellicott translation. Um, which is a decent translation. Some of the acting was okay. I loved the opening moment with Dionysus, he, um, seeing the masks for the first time and the character's physicality. I really enjoyed that. Um, I also really liked both the messenger speeches, actually. Um, I found them to be really interesting and captivating and well-performed. I didn't particularly take to the chorus, I have to say. So I think it was about 11 most of the time. There sometimes it was a smaller chorus. Um, in full mask with kind of a green Grecian-y dress and um, a thyrsus and black leggings. Um, dancing, uh, not speaking in unison all of the time, sometimes in unison, often singularly. Um, but I, I just didn't feel like that type of collectivity was something that um, was captivating and that worked. So I definitely think that choruses can work as a collective, especially if you have, you know, I like the kind of a very contemporary dance movement aesthetic, so a Pina Bausch kind of aesthetic. Um, I find that to be really effective for capturing chorality. Um, but this, it just didn't transcend for me. It didn't didn't sing in comparison to kind of the Van Hover chorus which was splintered so it was made up of individual units but I got a sense of them as a collective and um, felt like I got a story out of them. Um, doing this play, this particular play with a very kind of pretty dancey chorus I felt did a bit of a disservice to um, the brutality and um, the passion and the power of the chorus in the back eye. Anyway, I am going to call it quits there for today. I will see you tomorrow morning uh, when hopefully I will have a more productive day working on this Worcester group section. See you then. Bye.